afternoon, Gambia. Welcome to another edition of This Week with the U.S. Embassy. Uh, in the studio today, we have Dr. Maurice Dawson, an Associate Professor of Information Systems College and Business Administration from the University of Missouri, St. Louis. We'll get to him in a minute. So what have we been doing this week at the Embassy? Uh, the regular, this week hasn't really been busy, no upcountry trips, uh, but we're in... The stu uh, in, in the office to this week, we have selected our six YALI members, and I just want to congratulate all six of them. They have received their, uh, their acceptance letter from our charge Staples. Ambassador Staples has sent out uh, individual letters to all six of our YALI recipients. So congratulations again. We'll be putting our profiles of them on our Facebook page. Stay tuned and uh, follow your YALI leaders, uh, your young African leaders uh, in the Gambia who, who will be representing us this year in, uh, in the U.S. They will be going to different schools. Harvard University is one of them. Dartmouth, we have University of... Uh, I don't remember all the universities, but we do have quite an extensive list, list of about 25 universities where they will be spending six weeks learning uh, leadership, public administration, uh, entrepreneurship and business, and civic uh, engagement. So follow them on our Facebook page. In addition to YALI, uh, yeah, not a whole lot going on this week. There's a lot going on, according to the list that you're saying. Yeah. There's a lot going on. What, like what? Like, um, you know, we have somebody from Missouri. Yeah, know? yeah, 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 yeah. We did receive Dr. Morris. Exactly. And we'll be talking so to him. We'll be talking to him later. Don't exactly. Worry. We'll be talking to him. So brace yourself. And uh, <laughs> also, we st our American Corners are up. They're running. They're mm -hmm. active. Uh, we have new hours this month. We'll be open from 11 to 6 on the weekdays. And uh, on the weekends, we will be open from 10 to 7 p.m. We have American Corner on Karaba Avenue. We also have American Corner Afrisel in Bundung near the police station. So please visit our American Corners where you can learn about the U.S., where you can learn about studying in the U.S., where you can learn about all sorts of things from about the U.S. Use the Internet, research about schools, classes that you might want to pursue in your uh, higher education. So now... We have Dr. Maurice Dawson Jr. in the studio. Can you please uh, introduce yourself to Gambia? The whole Gambia is listening yeah. to you. And, and, and Gambia, please send in your request for Dr. Maurice to sing on the air if you want to hear his song. <laughs> he looks like he could sing. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't he, Flex? Definitely. Especially yeah. after him saying that, um, you know, Jill Scott is, a, is his favorite, like, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I, so I, he looks like he can sing. Yeah. Looks are very deceiving. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we like, we, deceive us, deceive us. <laughs> Exactly. So, uh, Dr. Maurice uh, Dawson, can you uh, introduce yourself? Sure. My name is uh, Dr. Maurice Dawson. I'm coming from the University of Missouri, St. Louis, where I'm an assistant professor of information systems, focusing on cybersecurity. Um, this is my second time here in the Gambia. I came last year through a, another institution located in Alabama. And from that first visit, I decided that I really wanted to focus a lot of my research efforts in this particular area mm -hmm. because I just see that there's so much promise here, especially in ICT. And so this year, we hosted our second academic symposium. Um, we hosted the West African Symposium on Technology, Science, Sustainability, and, computer, and Computing um, so that the institution would be able to bring up their academic reputation and plus students could have the ability to interface with lecturers from around the world. And so it's a place where individuals can publish, um, you can share thoughts, ideas, and we can think of collaborative ways to actually increase um, the university stance. So for instance, one of the issues brought up was actually labs. And so when I go back to St. Louis, what we'll do is work on virtual labs so the <laughs> students will have the technologies and the tools available. The first year, there was a lot of problems <coughs> for students actually obtaining various software packages. You know, the internet here takes a long time for downloading. Mm -hmm. And so some of these particular um, computing images, they take several hours to download just for a single image. And so back in you know, Missouri, I can download one of these images in about 20 minutes. So I took about a terabyte hard drive and I put tons of instructional material, um, various images for like Ubuntu, Red Hat Linux, um, and then all the things that were open source and that could be shared freely. And so I took those and I actually sent them off. And so every year I'll be doing that. So students won't have to worry about ha internet connectivity as a barrier to learning the latest and greatest software tools. Okay. 
So uh, uh, you did a symposium. This is the second uh, symposium. That's correct. And we're planning a third one next year. Um, we're planning to do something hopefully in Lagos, Nigeria in around January. Okay. And so right now we're in talks with the um, University of Lagos to actually um, host it there or one of the other um, universities in Lagos. And Lagos is it's, it's not a huge travel distance between here and Lagos, but we yeah. also ex expect to come back to the Gambia as well. Okay. So how does one get to be part of this symposium? Well, we send out a call for papers every year, so I usually send it to um, Sila, who's the public relations manager at um, University of the Gambia, mm -hmm. and he usually forwards it out. And then I put it on a wiki call for papers, I put it on conference alerts, um, and I send it out on Twitter, Facebook, okay. um, I put it on YouTube. We have a video on YouTube about this year's um, symposium, so we share it as much as possible. And then the cool thing is um, all the pap people that actually publish or write small abstracts or something like that, they get published online. Okay. So it comes up in Google Scholar, you type in your name, all the information comes up for you. Which is great when people are like, oh, what did you do at the University of the Gambia? Or what, are you, um, you know, what did you publish your item on? And they type in your name. All those materials come up on the web. Okay. Uh, do you like us on Facebook? Yes, Embassy Banjo. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, have, I haven't liked have the over, embassy, but I have like UTG on Facebook. We have over 42,000 <clears throat> followers. And most of our wow. followers are based in the Gambia. Nice. So, uh, this is a great way. We're promoting plugging, uh, but this is a great <laughs> way to promote your. Um, so you're on a campaign actually to build your. Oh yes, um, we're, we're Facebook trying. To, uh, our target is fifty thousand. We're trying to get. So you're trying to beat us. We, I think you, you, we've beat you guys. We've beaten Africa. No, I think we. I saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Africa is not. It's nowhere near forty thousand. Africa, we're you guys have some catching up to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So, what does a professor of information systems and business administration do? Well, so what I do is, like I said, um, my focus area is cybersecurity. So I left the last institution I was at to come to University of Missouri, St. Louis, and we call it UMSL, to actually start up a cybersecurity program. Okay. As you know, there's been tons of attacks worldwide, um, yep. issues with sensitive information being stolen. When the movie came out about the North so Korean government, yeah, yeah. yeah the uh, <laughs> movie production studio was p basically brought down. And so we're creating a cyber program to have individuals understand about network security, cryptography, intelligence, um, secure software development. And so we've actually set up that program. So we're offering an undergraduate certificate in cybersecurity, a graduate certificate in cybersecurity, and also an undergraduate minor. Um, and we've, we're developing partnerships with universities overseas that they'll be actually sending students over to St. Louis okay. so they can study. And um, so that, that's one of the things that I do. So teaching is a small part of it. The other part is research. Mm -hmm. um, working on lots of research papers, looking at business continuity, disaster recovery. I'm focusing now on open source intelligence. So basically looking at items that are found online via Facebook, Twitter, and using that to create like an intelligence analysis of, uh, on a person or a group or something like that. And so research is a heavy, heavy part of that. And that's where the symposium comes in. Since one of my jobs as a professor is to focus on research as well, the symposium helps bring new research ideas. Um, does uh, a big part of our job at the embassy is uh, education advising. We 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 have a lot of students who come to the American corners because they're interested uh, in learning how to uh, get into a U.S. university and most probably on a scholarship to to go do a four-year uh, or maybe a master's degree in the U.S. Uh, so, uh, just tell us a little bit. What does it take to get into uh, UMSIL? Well, I don't know exactly what it takes to get into UMSL. Um, i give you a little bit of background about our school and our school system. So University of Missouri-St. Louis is part of the University of Missouri school system. Um, between all four campuses, we have over 80,000 students. Wow. Um, and our campus alone, uh, we're in the St. Louis metro. St. Louis is a metropolitan area, about 3 million people. Mm -hmm. um, the city is about maybe 350,000. Half of that is actually an Af is African-American. Okay. So there's a large African-American population. So any Gambian should feel at home. There are All people right. that look like you, so you should yeah. feel at home. Um, <laughs> and then great. plus, there, we have African restaurants. There's Nigerian restaurants in the area and stuff like that. Lots of Jamaican food. So you will feel at home being um, in the St. Louis metro. So our university is over 17,000. Uh, we have a large urban campus. It's a relatively safe area. Housing is just wonderful. I mean, you're talking about pools and all that stuff associated with the campus housing. Um, our College of Business is um, ranked fairly high. Okay. Uh, we have the world's uh, number three researcher uh, for IT outsourcing. Um, our International Business Institute is ranked 16th. 16th. Um, so we offer dual Master's of Business Administration degrees. So you get an MBA from University of Missouri-St. Louis and then from one of our participating countries. Okay. We have lots of opportunities for traveling abroad. Um, we also have... <clears throat> lots of various um, student organizations and activities and stuff like that. And it's a safe campus. I mean, you don't have to worry about anything. You're walking around. Um, you don't have to worry about anybody attacking you or harming you or anything like that. It's a very, very safe campus. Uh, very lively. There's lots of stuff in the St. Louis metro to do. 
I mean, lots of stuff to do. There's um, tons of eateries. We have professional sports. We have uh, you know professional football team, professional hockey team, and probably one of the most attended baseball professional baseball teams in the country. And so there's lot. And then all, our museums are free. Our zoos are free. A lot of the public art stuff is free. So if you come, there's lots of stuff for you to see that will not cost you anything. And then um, we have a three-story student residence hall. Um, it's, it's like it's a student center, so you can do your buy your books, get university you know attire if you want. There's lots of restaurants there. We have Subway. There's stuff for pizza, buffalo wings. There's some Italian and some other stuff. I usually get like the wings and or yeah, a Subway sandwich. I'm not eating too healthy, but um, <laughs> there are healthy choices that are available. And then we also have a great transit system that will, um, we're located near two metro stops. So we actually have public transportation that goes to the city. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and as a student, you don't have to be able to yeah. drive. <clears throat> yeah. Because I know people that come from countries where they may not drive, they may take um, taxis, or yeah, they're using yeah. the bus system. Uh -huh. We have a metro link. So the metro link will take you all around the city. And we give huge discounts for students to actually use the metro link. So it's fairly affordable. So that's uh, www.umsl.edu? That's correct. That's your website. Uh, Looks cool, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I'm, I'm there right now. I think yeah. uh, <laughs> if you're listening and I'm uh, you I'm want to learn today. about how to get into AMSIL, please uh, go online, www.umsl.edu. Now, before I commit to you, when do you leave Gambia? I leave Gambia <laughs> this Saturday. This Saturday, I'll be traveling back home. I tried what, people. What I was going to try to get him to come to the American Corner and talk about uh, AMSIL. I wish well, you can still do that. that. Yeah. Yeah, but he's leaving Saturday. I yeah, don't know but what, what happens on Friday? Yeah. yeah. I will try to make it out there. <laughs> <laughs> the American corners are not far at all. Uh, and, and we do have a lot. And, and, and on Fridays, we have college, competitive you see? college clubs. You see? Uh, on Friday uh, from 3 to 5. So if you can make it, we it's run by our Peace Corps volunteers. And they really what they do is take the top 10% of students and they try to coach them to write uh, strong application essays, try to get high scores on the SATs so that they can be competitive to uh, college uh, to apply for colleges in the university uh, and universities in the U.S. So, so our Peace Corps volunteers are doing a very good job with our yeah. Uh, another colleges. key thing about UMSL, <coughs> our College of Business has AACSB accreditation international. Mm -hmm. So that means is worldwide in terms of business is ranked fairly highly, and in the U.S. we're ranked as I think by Forbes, we're a top 200 research university. So research is a huge focus, and we have a small class size. So you're not going to find class with like three or 400 people like you see in the movies. No. Um, they're relatively small. My undergraduate course, which is a course that's required for all students, mm -hmm. I think I have maybe 44 students. And then my graduate course, I have 14 students. It's grad and undergrad mixed together, but it's 14 students. So the classes are very manageable. Everyone, like the class that I teach my general information system course in, which is like using IS or ICT in business, Every student has a laptop. We, you know, the entire campus is wireless. The students get have laptops in the classrooms, in the okay. classrooms that I use. Mm -hmm. It's like stadium-sized seating. Um, it's very modern. And we're even building a brand-new college of business as well. So we have new facilities going up everywhere. Cool. So if you want to hear about more about uh, studying at OMSEL, send us a text message. If you have a specific questions for Dr. Uh, Dawson, right? Uh, send the text message, 1076, and we'll try to get your questions answered. Uh, how long have you been here in, in the Gambia? When did you come in? Um, I came last Friday. Last Friday. So I arrived last Friday, but my journey started Thursday. Okay. Um, the yeah, process yeah. of getting it to is Gambia a is... It is actually quite a long yeah, visit, so especially I, from Missouri. Yeah, St. Louis yeah. to Chicago, Chicago to Brussels, Brussels to Dakar. And after you get to Dakar, it's easy. You're just waiting for the people from the car to get on the plane yeah, and yeah. it's like a it seems it's like 15 minutes you get yeah. in the air and you're already going back down yeah yeah, yeah. it's like it's turning or something i i it's it's very short yeah which is, which is very cool so what what have you liked most uh this is your second visit so you must really know gambia very well Actu do you have a gambian name i don't have a gambian name we should give him one his <laughs> name is maurice what do you think musa musa will do uh, moses will do mm -hmm. yeah Musa. And, uh, Musa. Yeah. Musa, Musa is more Gambia than, than yeah. Moses. Yeah, yeah Musa will do. We'll give you Musa. Musa. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite song? My favorite song. Oh my goodness. Maybe we try to get. Let's get him cue it up so he can sing. You know. Yeah, actually, we, we do have. Uh, when, when we go with the commercial, mm -hmm. we'll when we we'll come back. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. With yes. basically uh, your Morris favorite Dawson song. will be singing. <laughs> On the air. Uh oh, this is scary. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be all right. <laughs> you will be all right. <laughs> There's nothing scary about it. <laughs> oh, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. <laughs>
Afri Radio, this is the, the station that speaks your language. BBC Premier League update from the home of Premier League football. Afrisal brings you BBC Premier League update straight to your mobile phone. News of your team, results, transfers and all the latest news every day from the English Premier League. To listen to the BBC Premier League update on your Afrisal line, simply dial 3121. The BBC Premier League update on Afrisal. The only mobile network you can hear it on in the Gambia. For any inquiries or more information about the service charges, please contact Customer Care on 111. BBC Premier League update. From the home of Premier League football, Premier League update. Available seven days a week, only on Afrisal. Always in support of sport. Here are the top fun rings for this week. Running through these checks till I pass out. Pass out. The shorty give me neck till I pass out. To set this song as your fun ring, the code is 160857. Hey. Record To set this song as your fun ring, the code is 160693. To set this song as your fun ring, the code is 160844. To set this song as your phone ring, the code is 160868. To set this song as your phone ring, the code is 160869. Thank you for listening. Afri Radio for you. Listen
And we're back on the air with Dr. Maurice uh, Dawson. How, what's your impression of the UTG as of now? I mean, uh, I mean, it's a fairly new school, and I think that they have lots of opportunity <coughs> for growth and actually growing correctly. Um, you know, right now they just have a bachelor's program in computer science and one in information systems. However, um, I'm working with them to create a master's and then a doctorate of science program at the institution as well, because right now they're sending faculty out to get their graduate degrees, but there should be something here locally for Gambians to do. Something as Gambian, um, you know, Gambian owned that, you know, they can say, all right, you know, I'm going to get my master's degree. I don't have to go to the UK or the US or the Germany or Norway. I can do it right here, right home. And so that's something that we're doing as well. One of the bigger things that we're working on is actually creating a um, environment where students can become entrepreneurs or innovators themselves. So kind of like a collaboration hub where students can work on projects with faculty members and they can seek some type of investment or funding to bring their projects to uh, maturity. The reason I ask is, I uh, thank you for uh, that information. The reason I ask is we get a lot of students and we try to tell them uh, UTG is a good and safe option, but sometimes it's hard for us to, to convince them of that. So thank you for uh, that information. Uh, Thank you for that. Uh, uh, you heard him, all our CCC students, uh, people who come and ask about studying, in the U U uh, about studying in the U.S., UTG is a good option. It is, should be one of your first options uh, in the Gambia. It is actually a very good university. We have some students who come around and they're hell-bent on, they want to go and study in the U.S. and nowhere else. So they don't do anything. And we try to convince them, apply to UTG. And some of these kids are very, very bright children. Yeah, I, I think the university has to do their part in terms of marketing as well. <coughs> like, you know, one of the things that UMSL does, which is great um, in our city, you'll see billboards up with why I chose UMSL and various people and alumni, you know, their CEOs, their directors at companies, they own pharmaceutical companies like Express Scripts and stuff like that. And so people see these big companies and they see these people and then they see that the university is branded to them because they're alumni. Mm -hmm. You know, UTG should, you know, put up billboards saying, you know, I went to UTG and this is what I'm doing now. Maybe I'm a minister or I'm doing this, but I chose UTG and this is where I'm at now. Because the school has an obligation to brand itself. You know, people aren't just going to come and say, I want to spend my money here, especially if they have the money to go outside the country. Because mm -hmm. people are like, I'm going to, if I have the money, I'm going to get the best option available, you know, the best affordable option. So UTG just simply needs to market themselves um, to the Gambians better. Why did you choose Gambia and UTG? Well, at, my, uh, at the former institution I was at, I was teaching a graduate business course on information technology, and my graduate student was actually Gambian. Um, oh, okay. The university had created a memorandum of understanding, uh, but nobody from the institution had went to Gambia yet. So he mentioned that they have a brand new uh, memorandum with ICT, they need people to come there. Um, I was planning on traveling to West Africa anyways, but I just diverted my travel from one country to Gambia, and I said, you know what, I'll just come to the Gambia. I get my ticket, you work on the housing, well, I'll come. And so that's what I ended up doing. So I came the first time, my student met me here in the Gambia. I was a little hectic because the country ran out of petrol during that time, but... Uh, oh, yeah, that's <laughs> the fun time. <laughs> you must have gotten a lot of exercise, huh? Yeah, I, I, lost, I lost some weight, <laughs> so it was good for me. Um, but it was, it was a great experience, understanding more about the culture here and stuff like that. Because all I knew about, bef um, about the Gambia beforehand was, you know, through the movie Roots because of Kuta Kente and stuff like yes. that. And so I knew about that. Um, but, you know, being here and experiencing Gambian life is just completely different than what you may see or, you know, research on the Internet. Um, it's, you know, people are happy. You know, it's very friendly. It's safe. Um, the food is amazing. I love uh, my chicken yasa. It's, uh, it's great. Um, and, I, you know, every time I come here, I see more and more stuff, more and more sites that are here. So uh, good decision, wise decision to come to Gambia. Oh, very wise. Yeah. What other country were you uh, planning to go to before Gambia? Um, Ghana. I was going to go to Ghana. So I was going to go to Accra. Gambia uh, over Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> well, still going to Ghana. I got family there, so I'll still be going there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do you hear that? He's still going to Ghana. Okay, no yeah, problem. We'll give him that. No problem. <laughs> Ghana. Anyway, we love our Ghanaian uh, brothers and sisters. They're, they're, they're pretty cool. I mean, I like my kinky and stuff. What's your favorite Gambian dish? Oh, my favorite one would be, um, it would be the chicken yasa. Chicken yasa? Yeah, it's yes, good. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really good. There's a, there's a restaurant I went to, Timeless, um, and it's uh, near the turnaround. Um, yeah, and it's, yeah, oh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, I've been there many times. They have, like, a chicken that's, like, um, it's with honey, some type of honey sauce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. by far one of my favorites. Oh, good. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> what would you miss most about Gambia when you go? The people. Uh, the people, yeah. You know, the, the people. That's what that's we get that a lot. The people, Gambian people, nice hospitality, nice friends. I hope so. That, 
Uh, you hope so? Yeah. You should know. Are we not nice, me and you? Uh, on the radio sometimes right he's now? nice. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes he's nice. Yeah. Got you on that one. <laughs> People, this is flex. Sometimes he's nice. <laughs> but I'm always nice. Yes, you're always yes. nice. Thank Definitely. you very much. Wow. Thank you very much. I That's can't say otherwise. the nicest things you've said to me in a while. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, I have to prove to them that I am nice okay. too. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> but doesn't request it for a song. Uh, did you get it? Of course, man. Uh, how can you have a guest and they want something and you can't yes, get it? Yes, they I have guess. to sing. <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't do that. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love the fact that you just asked that because that's why it took me a long time because I was there like, where can I get this claim? Yeah. It's a, it's a good song, though. It's yeah. Clean yeah. Uh, so that's why. It's a I, PG I, show, you, man. You, you, should, you should understand. <laughs> this is PG rated. That, that, that's why, actually, I jumped to that part. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's the chorus. It's clean. <laughs> yeah, the, the chorus. <laughs> it's a great song. It's yeah. called uh, Rains and Ira. It's um, with a um, a few artists out of Lagos and a few out of Josie or um, Johannesburg. Yep. Uh, it's, it's a great collaboration. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really a nice song. I was actually <laughs> vibing to it. Yeah, I love Nigerian and South African music a ton. So. Oh, we still got your Jill Scott, though. We've got okay. um, Hilo. Or Yemi Adele, she works as well. Yeah. My Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Choosing different a goosey soup. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh, you, 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 you're not getting that, huh? No, no. no. You just went right over my head. <laughs> People. Your hands, your smile. I have to do this for dozen, you know. <laughs> yeah. It is a great song. Don't say good. Say a great song. You've got taste flex. Yeah, and no, that's a good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's 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 great. Doc, uh, Jill Scott. No doubt. She's one of the best. She's one of my favorite, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she has a lot of soul when she um, sings. Yeah. You have yeah. a lot of artists nowadays, and they're they're singing yeah. about the same stuff: money, cars, yeah. partying. Um, but you know, she has music that really touches your soul. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, and you no can doubt. really feel it when she's singing. Because a lot of in, uh, a lot of singers these days are using like auto tune and yeah. all whining. I call it whining. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> you know, they're using all these tools, but in reality, they can't sing in, in reality, yeah, and they, they're bad performers. Yeah. You know, I saw um, Jill Scott perform live in DC. It was on my birthday, <laughs> and uh, it was an amazing show. I mean, she did. I'm jealous. Yeah, it I'm was jealous that you've seen her <clears throat> live. I'm I'm really jealous. Oh, wow. Yeah, she, she's an amazing performer. Wow. So. Just a completely random question. How cold is it in, in Missouri right now? In Missouri, I think when I left, it was around maybe 45 degrees. Oh, that's not too bad. No, it wasn't too bad, but I think about three, four weeks before that, it was in the single digits. Mm. So it was like one, seven degrees. Uh, in, in, in what uh, uh, scale? Fahrenheit. Oh, ah, okay. One degree Celsius. Which one is colder? Is it plus or minus? I know the minus. First, minus one, degree, one. one degree Fahrenheit. Oh, wow. <laughs> cold. I yeah, mean, I went to university uh -huh. in Florida, and I thought sometimes it was too cold. I cannot imagine what it would have been see, like. See, Florida is a paradise to Americans. Yeah. We see Florida as, yeah. you know, it's another country. It's, just, it's warm all the time. Okay. Um, you know, when wow. you... You're complaining about cold? He's saying it's yeah, warm yeah. all the time. It is, it is, and that's wow. what I'm telling you. So, uh, <laughs> in 2009, I decided to spend the Christmas in in, in Washington D.C. with my family in in Maryland, Gettysburg area, and that's the worst th decision I could have made because that year it snowed so much. It was just like see, snowing upon snow. Yeah, I used to snow. I used to live in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and Cedar Rapids, Iowa is above. It's five hours north of <coughs> St. Louis. And so there you have, you know, um, the weather there gets into negatives. And so it was about winter for five, six months out of the year. And then my Navy Reserve unit was in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Minneapolis is one of maybe the top ten coldest places in uh, North America. It's really cold. Mm -hmm. um, but you just have to adjust. You learn to dress warm. You learn to appreciate when it's 40 degrees. You can wear shorts. <laughs> you, know, it, you know, when I was leaving to come here, um, there were you know, still students who were wearing shorts. Oh, cool. You know, it's 50, 60 degrees. People wearing shorts, so they know, hey, this is warm. You know, for us, this is warm. This is like our summertime. Summertime. Mm -hmm. You know, I got off the plane here. I'm sweating. I didn't know what to do. I was like, oh, man, I, d I don't fit in. You know, I look <laughs> like you guys, but I can't adapt to this weather. <laughs> that I know. It's boiling <laughs> these days. My supervisor, before he left, uh, he went, Josh. Josh, Remember yeah. Josh? And he would, uh, he spent here two years. And sometime after, like, 18 months, he went back to uh, 
to, to, to Pennsylvania in say September or October and he came back and it's like all my family was laughing at me. I'm like, why you say that, Josh? It's like the whole time I was wearing jackets and, and yeah. I just couldn't handle it because it was so cold. <laughs> and they were like, you're African now. Uh, like, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you would adapt to the cold when I... Uh, He's been enjoying yeah, the sun too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. sun is nice. It is wow. nice. I mean, it it's nice out here. I mean, these days... Actually, these days are not... These yeah, are what we call Gambia. This Gambian is your winter season right yeah, now, right? Yeah, yeah like this is the best. Gambian, yeah. 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 yeah <laughs> I mean, I was... I, 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 I was in Russia last year for a Fulbright. I was in Tell Banks, Russia, and they have something called um, Woman's Fall or something like that. And it was uh, it was chilly. Yeah. It was it was pretty chilly. But you know, after being there and comparing that trip to here, it's like, whew. Yeah. Because it's you know it's like a, it's a it's a tropical paradise. <laughs> wow. I mean, every day I'm drinking mango, guava. So I mean, it's it's a paradise here. No doubt. Yeah, and, and you're just going to miss the mango season because it's gonna start soon. Soon. And there'll be mangoes everywhere. You just walk down the street. Plop well, hopefully I'm back in July. Um, I'm, I'm working out something with the university now where I can come back and do some more research yeah. no doubt. for the summer. So um, the VC promised um, that um, they would get me to come back here um, to you know, help out with some of their, their research uh, initiatives. And so if that happens, I'll probably be here around July, August. Ah. So, yeah, I will be and back for And then we'll commit you to educational advising. <laughs> At the American Corners. Always willing to help out with the U.S. Embassy. You heard him. He has committed himself. When he comes back, and I will look for you. (laughs) I'll I'll be like looking for him. Like, (laughs) is it July yet? Let's call the VC and see if he's here. (laughs) Oh, Silla. I have Silla's number. Yeah. Yes. Well, Well, you know, the Embassy has the ability to bring you back as well through a Fulbright. Yes, yes. Um, And we are exploring that option right now, uh, actively trying uh, to figure out how to do it. Yes. I can come out. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's great because it's the, the U.S. Department of um, s- the Department of State, what they can they do is this cultural exchange of education, mm-hmm. and so it helps build up universities internationally, create stronger partnerships. Yeah. And and is and you know it's regardless of like government politics and stuff, it's strictly for creating an mm-hmm. educational link. Yeah. And so you know I would be able to come two to six weeks. It's all paid for by the Department of State. I believe that UTG like provides driver um, or some sort of you know reliable transportation transportation, transportation yeah. um, which you know when I was in Russia I was a student that was driving me around so it's nothing big like a limousine or something <laughs> just something that you know runs uh, hopefully has seat belts um, and <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving that yeah. hopefully have <laughs> have you been to one of those cars where you just like put the seat belt over you? <laughs> I have one worse so last year I was in a van I had to get out because I think the it had to be like the gasoline was right underneath me and it was hot so I was sitting in there, and I was like, why is my leg burning? <laughs> and I looked down, and I was like, wait a minute. And I, I tap it, and I'm like, oh, this is the gas tank. Oh, good Lord, if we get an accident, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> Did you so tell your wife about that? <laughs> no, I did it because she would be very scared. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> wow. So uh, do you plan on bringing your family away? You have kids, right? Yes, I have kids. Uh-huh. Do you yeah. plan on bringing them along with um, you? It just depends on how the schedule works. Because my, fi- um, my family will probably be in Germany visiting and oh, okay. visiting our family and stuff. Right. Okay. Um, so they'll be pr- in Germany around the summer. So I'll probably, if I, when I do come back to Gambia, I'll fly to Germany, fly back with them from Germany to the States, and then fly from the States to Gambia. Gambia, wow. Oh. Yeah, it'll be, a, it'll be a lot of flying. So, uh, hopefully so you I can fly around a lot. Uh, you travel around a quite lot. a bit. Um, a lot around the states. Um, mm-hmm. Since the January, I think I've been to Denver, um, Charlotte, North Carolina, mm-hmm. and then of course here, uh, and then of course I was in Alabama, Mississippi recently, just last week. So mm-hmm. I was in, in driving through five states to get back home. Cool. Wow! Wow! Driving. So yeah. I think the longest drive <coughs> I did was from uh, Melbourne to New York City. How many hours was that? About. It was it like almost 20 hours? Oh, wow. The longest I've done is 15. I've done it straight. Yeah. Yeah, when my, when my wife first immigrated yeah, to America, she had to, we had to work the whole hours. license ordeal. Because, mm-hmm. you know, immigrating to America can be difficult, even if you're married to a citizen. So it was an issue because um, in Iowa, I guess, I don't think they didn't experience how it worked or whatever with the driver's license place, but they would keep issuing licenses only for six months or three months or something like that where we are going through the immigration process. And my wife, she didn't drive in Germany because in Germany, everybody does public transportation. Licenses are expensive. Gas is expensive because mm-hmm. you pay per liter. So I was like, oh, I just drive. So w- I would drive initially woo, from Cedar Rapids, Iowa to Colorado Springs. It's like 15 hours. And they drive mm-hmm. straight. So you drive out of one snow blizzard into another snow blizzard. Woo. Luckily, she got her license soon, and she <laughs> was able to more than help out. But wow. those first couple of trips were tough, huh? very tough. Very tough. Yeah. yeah. Wow. can't imagine that. I, I think can. I can do that. Yeah. You can. Yes, 15 you hours? Yes, you can. Let's see. Do we have any questions? Uh, Gambi, have you been sending in your questions? I uh, think so. Uh, well, not. Mm, I don't know what this person is asking. 
No, I don't know what is. I don't know that either. I don't know what this person uh, is. Asking. We're sorry. We're yeah. sorry. Uh, <laughs> can you please try to send in your text messages again? We have Dr. Maurice uh, Dawson from the University of Missouri, St. Louis, in the studio with us, and he's talking about some of the work that he's done in the U.S., what he does in the U.S., what he likes, and uh, we never asked him what he doesn't like. <laughs> 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 wow. Anything? Yeah. Well, I think the biggest issue um, is just power. Just, but you have that in a lot of West African countries, yeah. the stability yeah, of power. True. Yes. Um, my, you know, from coming from you know my viewpoint, I'm like you guys get ton of you know there's ton of sunlight, so you should have solar energy. Yeah. You have the River Gambia that needs to be explored. You have the ocean that needs to be explored. You get tons of wind, so you can have hydro power that needs to be explored. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you should be exploring because you know power here. I mean, it should be easy. I mean, country is not a big country. It's you know roughly two million people mm -hmm. or less. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah. infrastructure. Infrastructure is big. I say with any type of country, um, infrastructure. You know, for the city. Education is highly important. Uh, you know, with UTG, I'm shocked that they only have 5,000 students. <coughs> There's a lot more people here in the country that could, you know, would you know, benefit from going to a university. Because any type of change in culture, government politics, happens from those that are educated. That's so they're like, okay, I see this. And, you know, someone will say, you know what, I'm going to come up with a better way of, you know, taking the ferry. Because I know some people take the ferry to go home, and they have no clue in times of the ferry. Um, you know, with power, you know, how because if you had power, you could do other industries. Mm -hmm. Like we were talking about IT outsourcing. India does tons of IT outsourcing. Yes. Gambia is cheap when you talk about dollars to dollars. W you know, one dollar right now equals about 45 dollars. 47. Know, 47. Seven. It's even more. See, I should have waited to change my money. I should have <laughs> kept some dollars on me. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm feeling sad. Now I'm feeling uh, like I've been ripped off. Don't feel sad, you guys. <laughs> but imagine if individuals could do software development or IT outsourcing and they're making maybe 2,000 US dollars here in the Gambia. That's a lot. And yeah. that could happen. Yeah, it could happen. You know, Gambia, you know, your, the colonized language is English, which is unfortunate for colonization, but for the language being English, it's a world language. Yes. So uh, you could yeah. do outsourcing, IT services, IT support all from the Gambia. Like, someone in the United States, they may make about $40,000 for the work. You may say, well, we'll charge you twenty five, twenty six thousand dollars $26,000. Dollars, yeah. Yeah, and so for the U.S. person, like, oh, man, that's really cheap. Yeah. We, uh, but for here, you're, you're living like a king. Yeah. And so that's one of the great <laughs> things. But however, to do that, you have to have an infrastructure that supports it. And electricity is important. Electricity and also better internet. Internet, yeah. Internet speed. You know, uh, one of the issues I had right now with the internet provider was they said I went over my max. I think I watched a few YouTube videos and then my Q cell shut off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, you know, one of, the, one of the big things is thinking about how do you better um, provide those other technical services, services and stuff like that. <clears throat> no doubt. Because once you can do that, you can explore all types of stuff. I mean, most people are going to, um, they, they go to Silicon Valley, which is uh, in California, to set, you know, s uh, set up their own startup company and stuff like that. Gaming can have their own tech startups right here. And imagine how many people can be employed and what type of, um, you know, lifestyles would change. And then the other thing is, you, you know, you have shared languages between, like, the Senegalese. You know, you have, you're already shipping goods, you know, through the river just right in Tangi. Yeah. I mean, it's easy, direct access. They have 14 million people. You have Guinea, Guinea-Bissau. You add those countries in. I mean, you're talking about now a reach of, you know, maybe like 30 million people that you could reach and sell goods and services to. Wow. So there's lots of items to be explored. Wow. So uh, a lot of what Dr. you're Dr. doesn't make me and you yeah. look very small. Yeah, we are, actually. We are very wow. Small. We We're are all small. experts yeah. in our own little realm. Yeah. So never feel small. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't looking at it like that, though. So, <laughs> so a lot of what you talk about is all about entrepreneurship. You yeah. know? Correct. Uh, yeah. And especially for, uh, for Africans, because, you know, one of the things as African-American growing up, you know, you, you, the culture that we learn about in the States about, you know, being black is slavery. Mm -hmm. You're taken from Africa, you, you mm -hmm. know, no reading, no writing. You're enslaved. Slavery wasn't that bad. Until you watch Roots and you realize that you were beaten, chained, hung, and all this other stuff, you're like, oh, man, this is horrible. Yeah. This is what it means to be black in America. And so when you think about it, like, what's going on in Africa? What's Africa? Because you don't learn too much. You don't learn about metropolitan areas like Lagos and Johannesburg or mm -hmm. apartheid. Mm -hmm. You don't learn about what's going on in Kenya, the divide between North and Sub-Saharan Africans, or the tribal differences, or what colonialism did, or an issue like you watch Rwanda Hotel, uh, but you don't realize, you know, what happened with the people that colonialized the country that actually drove the largest genocide by radio. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you don't learn any of that stuff. But then when you think about Africa, it's like, man, you know, what could be done? And what are those barriers that divide us, you know, worldwide? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and then you think about, okay, what type of change agents could I do? Like, how could I give back to the region that my DNA traces to? 
And so that is entrepreneurship. So if you can change the lives of people, people are empowered. And so then, you know, Africa will start to have a, a place. Even in the UN right now, African countries, even though most of the issues in the UN deal with Africa, I think most African countries, if not all, are only like observing members. They can't vote on issues like we need to deploy troops here. They can say, well, we can observe, but they can't really vote. And so it's, it's sad, but, you know, countries, certain countries should be power players. Nigeria should be a power player. No South way. Africa should be a power player. Um, so my goal is to, in my, my hopefully long lifespan, is to help uh, make that change, at least through empowering local citizens to, you know, be entrepreneurs, you know, change or guide their own lives. And they shouldn't have to come to America or the Western world to do that. Because yeah. too many times you see that. People leave their country and they're uh, doctors, lawyers. And now you have a, um, <coughs> you have a brain power gap in that country. Mm -hmm. So now that engineer who's making lots of money in the States, doing great things, is great for America, but it's bad for people home. Yeah. Maybe he sends a few, a few, uh, some money back, but it doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. It's like receiving aid from countries. Here's a million dollars. Okay, the million dollars is great, but... We haven't developed anything. We don't have our own crops. We don't have um, our, you know, good agricultural system. I mean, Gambia should be great for agriculture. You have all these wasted mangoes here, yeah. right? Mango juice. Schools could be done differently. You have that. Yeah. Uh, online education could be done. I mean, you have people who are, I guess you call them the bush or the rural area. There could be a way to educate these people using, you know, Internet services. The problem is Internet and power. You know, not everybody should have to come to Banjul or Saracunda to, uh, you know, enhance the quality of their lives. We should definitely uh, <coughs> come. Uh, the embassy has a, a project that we actually. Which means you should WF. Yeah, we've actually. Sure yeah, it's it's something that we are aware of because uh, according to the UN, the Gambian population will double in 15 years. I mean, already we have uh, more than almost 70 percent of uh, the population is under the age of 25. Can you imagine that number doubling in 15 years? In 15 years or less, that number will double. So uh, at the embassy, we're aware of this, and we, uh, we recently, not too recently, back in September 2014, we signed a grant with American Chamber of Commerce for the startup incubator. And basically what this is supposed to do is uh, handhold businesses until they get to the point where they're uh, comfortable to be on their own without assistance uh, to move on. It's, uh, we realize there's a lot of challenges for businesses in the first few years. And uh, this is the the startup incubator is uh, set up to try to address some of these issues. It's great so that, that you mentioned that. I met with a few people here that were asking me business questions because I also have a I, one of my, I have like a, a couple degrees, but one's an actual master's in business administration. Um, and I used to work aerospace and defense as a program manager, managing multi-million dollar contracts. Mm -hmm. And so when I talked to some of these individuals who were seeking to start their own business, none had a business plan. Mm -hmm. We would talk about, you know, what type of investments are you seeking? They would say, well, I want to do this business. It's going to cost, you know, uh, you know $500,000. Like, okay, well, how much money do you have to invest yourself? What collateral? It's like, I have zero. Okay, well, yeah. what can you offer? Services. Like, well, I'm going to just do the business myself and take your idea. That's, you know, it's, it's stuff like that. You know, creating, you know, um, non-disclosure agreements. Yeah. You know, everyone I talked to, no one had a non-disclosure agreement, which means technically and legally I could take their idea and just do it myself because if they don't have the money, I could say, you know, I'll just do it myself. It's a great idea, mm -hmm. but you have no legal protection. Yeah. Also, with the law school at UTG, I don't know if they're actually putting out business lawyers, but I think that's important as well. And then also creating an ease route or route um, for entrepreneurship. Yeah. And, and, and we're hoping that uh, these are some of the things that uh, the incubator can uh, address. It, it's, it's the first of its kind in the Gambia. And I uh, just want to remind everyone, Ali Ujalo, the project manager, would be uh, at Nubian at the After Five event talking more about the project uh, uh, tomorrow from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Nubian. Uh, this is what he'll be doing, basically talking about the project, how do you get... Uh, how do you get to benefit from the project, why the project was started, what it will address, how it will address this, and yeah, and for the crowd who are interested in learning more or becoming part of the incubator or being in the incubator, how do you get to be, what are they looking for? Yeah, in St. Louis, we're doing a lot of stuff with entrepreneurship, and there's a gentleman who helps run our social media program. He actually manages the social media program. Um, his name is, uh, he's a pr Professor Perry Drake. He does amazing stuff. But in terms of what's being done, we actually um, have space that is shared, you know, with an individual. So maybe it's like entire building floor or office floor, and different companies can actually take cubicles and sit in those cubicles and rent out that space. Uh, something similar. That's yeah. So uh, individuals yeah, are sharing, yeah, yeah. And, and people know each other around the city. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I was kind of amazed about for in the Gambia that you know, for a country to so small, some people just don't know each other. 
So I meet one person and like, oh, you, you know, I, I've been trying to reach this. It's like, well, do you know so and so? Like, you know, I'm a foreigner. <laughs> I should know this. You should know this. This should be this should be your backyard. Yep. And so, you know, when you're trying to start up any business, if you can't play in your own backyard, how will you play in the other markets? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that's true, that's true. And and not just sharing resources, but sharing sp experiences is also what uh, will happen in the incubator when it does get up and running. So experience, oh, I want, you know, I'm having this problem just by the water cooler talking to another CEO or another executive, or this is a problem we're facing. Oh, you know what, this is how we, we addressed it in our company. <coughs> like, you know, just sharing experiences is actually a great uh, it, it's actually very valuable. So, yeah. so uh, if you want to know more about the startup incubator, uh, be there tomorrow at Nubian from uh, six to nine p.m. Uh, we're almost at the end of this show. Uh, any last words, Flex? Me, um, it's a pleasure actually listening to uh, Doctor. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm inspired, and um, mm -hmm. I hope the last of the people that are listening. I also inspired. You uh, think? You think? Yes. <laughs> I know I'm inspired. <laughs> if you want me to use that word. <laughs> Since you are the boss. <laughs> but I think it's inspiring, like, hearing you talk and uh, some of the stuff that you, you, yeah. you, you make mention of. Uh, and I think um, mm. it's great. We would love to have you back on it'll this yeah, very station. Be a without to be back. And um, so we can have more talk. Because at the end of the day, you know, sometimes, you know, one little thing can, you know... Uh, light the fire like ah, and you, you want to do so much so yeah definitely you know, one of the you. things i always tell people is you know education is important mm -hmm. and you know knowledge is important you know no matter what type of situation you're in you're in a place that you don't need to be in or you're living in a place where maybe the beliefs you know they affect you and you're like i don't want to be here or you're feeling as if you can't um achieve what you need you know need to do in life you know education helps open those additional doors mm -hmm. whether you can achieve it here or elsewhere or provide other insights or other roads to actually the inroad you want to get to. So that's why education, I, I think it's just important. No doubt, I agree. I, 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 I agree to 100%. <laughs> education is, uh, and this is something that I try to promote all the time. When uh, One of the great things with working at the embassy is that you, you reach a lot of youth. There's a lot of youth in the Gambia. There's hungry talent. It it's provides men an opportunity to just uh, mold and, and, and teach and even though I'm not a very good teacher, but you know, I'm, you I, are, I keep you are, you surprising really myself all the time. Like yes. people come back to me, you know what? You know what she said? That stuff that you said. I'm like, what did I say? I, it must have been. An, uh, it must have been a moment. I was in the moment. <laughs> so yes, uh, I, I feel like you know, I'm really uh, contributing a lot, and I, I tell people all the time. People ask me all the time. Oh. And they're surprised when I tell them I do have a master's degree in electrical engineering. What? <laughs> you know? so, so, yeah, education. I mean, with education, it's yours. You can do whatever you want with it. You can, you can, I've worked, uh, I'm working in a public relations. I've worked as an engineer. I've worked as a, a technician. I've done all sorts of things. I've done research. I mean, get that education. Uh, it's a short time. It's not a long time. I mean, it might seem long when you're in that course trying to figure out how to get to the end of the semester, but just be focused for that short time and get to the end. Here's I'm something even, even more. You know, my grandmother grew up during segregation in America. And my dad went to one of these first desegregated schools in Virginia. So, you know, there was a point that we, as due to the color of our skin, couldn't go to school. Wow. You know, you couldn't go to school. So why now, when you have the opportunity to go to school, you're like, I don't need it. I don't want it. You should be taking as much education as possible because there's a reason that people may not have wanted you to want it. No doubt. Because it's, it's freedom. Yep. You heard that. All right. It has been a great show. It has been a great show. We'll look out for Dr. Morris uh, the next time he comes so that he can do some college advising at uh, the American Corners. Uh, thank you very much yep. for... And please uh, take a look at UMSL. It's a great institution. Yes. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> UMSL.edu, University of Missouri, St. Louis. Uh, take a look at it. And if you would need more information, we're here at the American Corners. We can reach out to Dr. Morris and uh, he can. I'm sure he'll put us in touch with the right... Uh, uh, people at OMSEL to assist you in your application process. One question before we go, Drew. Mm -hmm. You still thinking of taking the show from Papa? Yes, I have uh, uh, officially taken the show from Papa. <laughs> Say bye-bye to Papa, everybody. All right. Papa is no more. <laughs> this is my show now. <laughs> All right, have a great <laughs> All right, have a great week and uh, see you back on the air next week, Thursday. Give me all your